In this next session, we're going to start thinking about stock management. As we go through this section of the syllabus, there are two th key things we need to consider. First of all, how much stock should we order? So when we place an order with our suppliers, should we order 50 units of stock each time? Should we order 100 units, 1,000 units, and so on? What we're going to see is we need to consider the answer to this question very carefully because we want to minimize the costs um, related to our stock. The second question is how much stock should we hold? So presumably we want to make sure that we don't run out of stock. So if our customers come along wanting to buy our product, we are able to provide them with that product. We'll get to that question later. For now, we're going to stay with the first one. How much stock should we order each time? To understand how many units of stock we should order each time we place an order, first we need to consider the costs related to our stock. The first stock cost we want to consider are our stock holding costs. If we place an order for a thousand units with our supplier, then presumably we're going to need to have a warehouse to put that stock in when it arrives. And the more stock we order, the more stock we hold, the bigger the warehouse is going to have to be. If we're going to have a large warehouse, then we're going to have to pay for perhaps a store's manager to run the warehouse and manage our stock levels. We'll probably need to pay for some security around the warehouse to protect our stock. And in addition to that, if we order a lot of stock in advance, then depending on the material, we may run the risk of the stock deteriorating before we use it in our production process or sell it on. So we'll just note down a couple of those stock holding costs. And we just need to be aware in relation to our stock holding costs, the higher our stock holdings, the higher our annual holding costs will be. So if we're going to order 2,000 units every time we place an order with our supplier, our warehouse potentially will need to be quite big. If we're only ordering 10 units each time we place an order, our stock holding costs are going to be significantly lower. Now when we're calculating the annual holding costs in relation to our stock, we need to think about first of all, how much stock do we hold on average? In F2, we take a very simple approach to considering how much stock we hold in our warehouse. If we look at a graph to illustrate this, where our x-axis represents time and our y-axis is our stock holding. Let's say on the 1st of January then, we place an order for 100 units. So on the 1st of January, there are 100 units in our warehouse. Assuming we use our stock at a steady rate, then our stock holding will decrease steadily until we get down to zero. 
at that point, we'll need more stock. We'll place another order for 100 units. So we're back up to the 100 units level. As time goes on, again, our stock will decrease steadily at the same rate until we get to zero again, where we'll place our next order for 100 units and work back down to zero, and so on. So if we were to think about then, in this example, what is our average stock holding? Well, as we're using our stock at a steady rate, our average holding is 50 units. So if we know how much stock we have on average, then we are able to use this to calculate our annual holding costs. For F2, there is a very simple formula for calculating our annual holding costs. You need to make sure you remember this for the exam. So our annual holding costs are equal to Q over 2 multiplied by CH where Q over 2 is our average stock holding and CH is the cost of holding one unit per annum. And that's how we calculate our annual holding costs. We're going to get on to an exercise to put this formula into practice in a couple of minutes. But before we get there, I want us to consider our next stock cost. The next thing we're going to look at are stock ordering costs. Now, every time we place an order with our supplier, there are costs associated with placing that order. So in the last session, we went through the materials purchasing process. If we have this materials purchasing process, so it goes through our purchasing department, we have to check the stock when it arrives to make sure everything's in order, and we have to update our accounting system with that information that's going to use up time and resource of the company, which means that whole administ administrative process is a cost to the company. Other stock ordering costs would be perhaps the, stock of the cost of delivering the units. So again, we'll note down what are our stock ordering costs. It's primarily going to be the administrative costs. and also perhaps delivery costs. So if we think about then, how do our stock ordering costs behave? Well, let's suppose for a minute that as a company, we have established that the cost of placing one order is £100. If we decide to place one order with our supplier throughout the course of the year, then our annual stock ordering cost will be £100 because we've only placed one order during the year, so we're only incurring that cost once. What happens if we place two orders during the course of the year? Well, this should be straightforward. If we place two orders, then we're going to incur our ordering cost twice, so it'll be two times 100 or £200. So the more orders we place, the higher our annual stock ordering costs will be.
And again, for F2, there is a straightforward formula you need to learn that can be used to calculate a company's annual ordering costs. So if we note that down, annual ordering costs are equal to D over Q multiplied by CO. Where our D is annual demand. Q is, of course, our order quantity. And CO is the cost of placing one order. So that's how we calculate our annual ordering costs. Note that this figure D over Q represents the number of orders we're going to place in a year. So D is our demand, so the number of units we need in total for the course of the year, divided by our quantity, or the number of units we order each time. So D over Q is the number of orders we make in a year, and we just multiply that by the cost of placing one order. So what we'll do now is just have a look at a quick exercise to see how we apply these two formulae we've just learnt. So we're told the following information is available for a company, and we're given the CH figure, which is the cost of holding one unit per annum, the CO figure, the cost of placing one order. We're told that our demand is 5,000 units, and we've been asked to calculate the annual holding and the annual ordering costs at two different order quantities. So let's have a look. If we set up a table for this exercise, we're looking at two different values for Q, 50 units and 100 units, or excuse me, 1,000 units. For each order quantity, we want to calculate the annual holding cost and the annual ordering cost. So, starting with our order quantity of 50 units, if we're calculating the annual holding cost, It'll just be Q over 2 multiplied by CH. Our order quantity is 50 divided by 2 multiplied by the cost of holding one unit per annum, which is two pounds. So our annual holding cost then will be 50 pounds. Let's look at our annual ordering costs for this order quantity. Remember, our annual ordering cost will be demand over quantity multiplied by the cost of placing one order. So if we do that calculation, our demand is 5,000 units divided by our order quantity of 50 and multiplied by the cost of placing one order. So if you work that through then on your calculators, you should get £8,000. Let's have a look then at what happens to our annual holding cost and our annual ordering cost if we increase the order quantity to 1,000 units. So very same formulae. Our annual holding cost will be our order quantity, which is now 1,000, divided by 2, multiplied by the cost of holding one unit. So our total annual holding costs will be 1,000. If you notice, they have increased significantly. So when our order quantity was only 50 units, our annual holding cost was 50 pounds. 
when we increase our order quantity, our annual holding costs will also increase. Now the reason for this is that if we only order 50 units each time with our supplier, then we only need a very small warehouse. Our holding costs will be quite low. The more units we order with our supplier, the greater our holding costs will be in total. Looking at our final calculation, so to calculate our annual ordering costs will be our demand, 5,000, divided by our order quantity of 1,000, and multiplied by the cost of placing one order. So when we work that through, we get 400. And again, we can see what a difference there is between these two figures. If we only order 50 units with our supplier each time we place an order, then that means we're going to have to place 100 orders throughout the course of the year in order for us to reach our demand figure of 5,000. So if we're ordering, a if we are placing 100 orders throughout the year, then we're going to incur this 80 pound cost 100 times. As our order quantity increases, so when we increase our order quantity to 1,000 units, it means we're going to be placing far fewer orders throughout the year which means our annual ordering costs drop significantly.